Hi everyone, this is Clayton, VE3IRR, and today I'm going to show you how to use a piece of software called SDR Sharp together with an RTL SDR TV tuner dongle to receive signals. I'll assume that you've already visited the rtlsdr.com website where there is a quick start guide that gives you all the instructions you'll need to download and install the software and drivers for your tuner. So we'll open up the SDR Sharp folder where everything got downloaded to and double click on SDR Sharp. And I'll just bring this up on the full screen here. Now the first thing you need to do when you open up this software is select what tuner you're using it with. So in this drop down box, I will click on RTL SDR USB. And once that's done, we can hit the play button and start receiving signals. So while I tweak a few settings here, I'm just going to turn down the audio so that you can hear me. Um, and let's take a look at what we're seeing on the display here. We've got two main pieces. At the top here is what's called the FFT display, and that's basically a, a signal analyzer. It's showing you frequency along this axis and signal strength along this axis. And this particular tuner picks up a range of 2.4 megahertz. So you can see we're centered here at 105.5 megahertz. And we can receive signals all the way down to 104.4 or so, and all the way up to about 106.56 megahertz. And uh, that's in the middle of the FM broadcast band. And you can see I'm actually picking up three FM radio stations. There's uh, 106.1 there's 105.3 and there's 104.7. Now down in the bottom of the display we're looking at a waterfall which is basically showing us the same information that's up here but over time. Um, and how this works is that the, the stronger the signal or the higher things are here the brighter the color will be. So you can see where the signal is low it's kind of yellow right now and it gets redder as the signal gets stronger. Now, one thing you'll notice with this particular tuner is that its dynamic range is not that great. Uh, and so you can see that the noise floor is down here somewhere between minus 60 and minus 70 dB. And so there's not really much point in showing all this range here from minus 70 down to minus 130. So what we can do is scroll down here to the FFT display settings and take this range slider and just slide that to the left until our uh, range of signal strength is going from 0 down to minus 70. And you can see that's a much more useful range. It's made these peaks a lot higher now and easier to spot. And uh, also the colors are a little more vivid in our waterfall display. So you can see now when signals are really weak, they're blue and uh, the colors get, get brighter as the signal strength goes up. Now, the next thing you'll want to adjust uh, is the gain of the RTL SDR tuner. So you can do that by clicking the Configure button, and right down at the bottom of the settings for your RTL SDR tuner is this RF gain slider. By default, it's way down at the bottom, which is essentially uh, zero gain. And you can see that as I drag that slider to the right, the signal levels go up. Uh, the noise goes up, but it looks like in this case the signal went up even more, and so we can we can receive the signal better when that value is set higher. Um, you have to be you have to be careful not to set that too high though, because you can see if I start to get up near the top of the range here, we got a lot of strong signals, and those signals will start mixing together and giving you inter giving you uh, intermodulation products. And so you can see here is a phantom signal that wasn't there before I increased uh, the signal strength. That's not an actual FM radio station, that's just uh, the signals from other radio stations mixing together and producing new, new signals inside the receiver. So that's obviously too high, so we'll bring that back down so that those phantom signals disappear. Now, where you want to set this will depend on the signal environment you're in. If you're in uh, if you're tuning into a place where there's a lot of strong signals, you might need to set that fairly low uh, to avoid intermodulation. 
and if you're tuned to somewhere where there's not any strong signals then you may be able to tune that all the way up to the right hand side and listen that way you can listen in to even the very faintest uh, signals but we'll leave this um, about in the middle of the range for now so we'll close that down now to actually demodulate these uh, radio stations and start listening to them we go back up to the top here and select which demodulation we want to use in this case these are wideband FM stations so we select WFM and I'll just turn my audio back up so we can hear what's going on um, and if you want to tune in a station you can just click in the middle of it and there you go we're receiving 103.5 FM and you can see not only are we receiving the audio we're also receiving the RDS data so it's showing you the name of the song that's playing that's information that would normally be displayed on your radio if it can receive RDS and if we want to retune I can click on another station there's 104.7 click up here to listen to 106.1 another way you can retune is by dragging the window left or right so you can see if I want to tune lower I can just drag over here now we're going down the band. There's 102.5 FM, for example. Another way we can retune is by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. So if I turn the wheel up, I'm moving up the band, and if I turn the wheel down, I'm moving back down. So let's just turn the audio back down again. Um, the next thing you'll want to do is um, correct for any inaccuracy in the oscillator in your RTL-SDR. It's got a 28.8 megahertz oscillator in it. Um, so it's supposed to be operating at exactly 28.8 megahertz, but um, the oscillator won't be perfect, and so it'll be running a little bit faster or a little bit slower than 28.8 megahertz, which means that the frequencies that you see displayed in this program will be off by a little bit. But fortunately, almost all uh, SDR software allows you to correct for that. Um, the way I like to do that is by tuning to a, a signal whose frequency I know and uh, my favorite is to use the global TV uh, television signal uh, which starts at 470 megahertz and there is a pilot tone which is a nice narrow um, frequency uh, that we can use to uh, calibrate our um, our uh, oscillator frequency. So I'll just tune to 470.309 megahertz and press enter. You, see, you can see um, if you want to tune to a different frequency you can just click on the digit that you want to change and then start typing. So I'll type 406, sorry, 470.309 hit enter and now we're tuned. And you can see there's that um, there's that pilot uh, tone that I was talking about that's exactly at 470.309 megahertz. So I'll just switch to CW for tuning in a narrow band signal. And I can take the zoom bar if we want to zoom in and have a close look at that signal. So you can see here's where, here's where we're tuned to, but the signal is actually over here. So you, we can see right away that uh, my oscillator is not running at exactly the right speed. So to correct for that, we'll click Configure again to bring up the settings for the uh, tuner. And you can see down here at the bottom this frequency correction in parts per million. And you just adjust that up or down until this signal comes right over to where it's supposed to be. So in my case, I need to move it up. So you can see here, 1920, 27, 28. 28 seems to be right on the mark. So that's moved that uh, 470.309 megahertz signal right into the, right over top of the uh, frequency that I'm tuned into. So there we go. Now we should be getting accurate uh, frequency readings. So I'll just zoom back out. And now let's tune in some other uh, signals here. Um, as an example, we could tune in the Environment Canada weather radio frequency for Ottawa. That's 162.55. So I'll just click here on the first digit here and type 162.55, enter. And there we go. 
Now um, I'm still set to CW. Let's go back to Narrowband FM or NFM. Click that and bring up my volume here. There we go. So now we're hearing uh, the weather frequency. Just turn that down a little bit. Once again, you can see if I want to have a closer look at that signal, I can bring the zoom bar up here and now I can see, um, of course, the signal is very strong in the center near where the carrier is. And um, as the audio is modulated, sometimes the carrier deviates out to the side. When it's silent, the carrier stays right there in the middle and you get a really strong signal. So let's zoom back out. Um, Another example here is we can tune to 315 megahertz. That's where a lot of um, garage door openers and car keys uh, operate at. So we'll tune to 315. And I brought my uh, car keys here. Let's see if we can see the signal show up here when I press the button. I'll just tune down a little bit here. Yep. It's just a little bit lower, so it's just a bit below 314 megahertz. So when I press the button, you can see the signal show up there. Now if I turn, turn this to an AM demodulator, we should actually be able to hear it as well. Let me bring the volume up. There you go, there's my uh, car keys. And I have my garage door uh, opener here as well. This one I think is a little bit higher in frequency, but we'll just press the button. There it is, over on the right hand side of the screen. You can see it popping up. So let's tune there. There you go, that's my garage door opener. Um, another interesting frequency band to listen to here in Ottawa is from about uh, 866 up to 868 megahertz. That's where um, the city of Ottawa has its uh, trunked radio system that uh, OC Transpo and the Ottawa police are using. So uh, we'll just tune to the center of that at 867 megahertz. And uh, we'll go back to narrowband FM. And you can see already there's signals popping up all over the place. They use a number of different channels. So we'll click there and we can start receiving. There's another signal. Here's another. Another a useful thing you can see I've tuned here to a station that's not uh, or a frequency that's not being used. Um, there's a squelch function, so if I turn that up a little bit, eventually the audio should cut out. There we go. So now we're not hearing anything, but if I click on an active signal. Uh, we should start hearing it. There we go. And once this uh, station stops transmitting, oh, I guess it's gone on to a digital transmission now. But if I tune to a frequency where there's no transmission, now it's get, it, gets, it gets squelched out for us. Now, uh, for one last test, let's see if we can receive uh, some amateur radio beacons. Uh, here in Ottawa, the West Carleton Amateur Radio Club uh, operates a couple of beacons on uh, 33 and 23 centimeters. So let's see if we can pick those up. So first we'll switch over to CW since they are uh, CW beacons. And the 33 centimeter beacon is operating at 903.360 megahertz. Now, since it's a very weak signal, we're going to need to increase the RF gain. So let's crank that up just about to the top. And um, of course, we're in the middle of the 902 to 928 megahertz ISM band. And so all these crazy signals that you're seeing popping up here, those are actually water meters and hydrometers. This big one here is a hydrometer. And all these little signals that are moving all over the place, those are water meters. And they're ho hopping around to all sorts of different frequencies. So you can see uh, they really move all over the place. Um, but the signal we want to pick up should be somewhere around here. Um, now let's zoom in so we can see if we can spot it at all. Now one thing you'll notice is that if you zoom in really far, the resolution here isn't great. 
um, and you can improve that by going into your FFT settings and we'll just take the resolution from 4096 up to let's say 131,000. Now you can see a much sharper view of the signals that are there and what have we here? That looks like the beacon right there. So I'll just scroll down with my mouse wheel to get to that frequency. There you are, VE3WCC. Now let's see if we can tune up and listen to the one on uh, 23 centimeters. The frequency for that is uh, 1296.06, so we'll enter that in, 1296.06, enter. And there it is, right there. So I'll just click on that, tune up a little bit. Let's just bring our gain right up to the max here. Here there's no water meters or uh, power meters to contend with, so I can really get away with cranking that gain up to the very highest value. So there you are, the VE3 WCC beacon on uh, 23 centimeters. And uh, all of the examples that I've shown you here, I've just been receiving using the uh, little whip antenna that the dongle comes with. Um, so as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job even picking up uh, weak signals. I think this is only uh, uh, a few milliwatts here being broadcast from downtown Ottawa, and I'm located out in, in Canada. So not bad that I'm able to, to pick that up. Um, so I think I'll, I'll leave it at that for now and uh, leave you to explore the other capabilities of SDR Sharp. So um, have fun and um, enjoy your new hardware. So 73 from VE3IRR.